Hi guys, in this tutorial I'll show you how to showcase your final head sculpture through lighting and rendering. This is pretty much the final step to show off our final render to the world. The lighting setup will help to complement all the hard work that we've put into sculpting this head. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. For this one I think I'll just go to the layout workspace. So we don't need to do any more sculpting, that's all done now. So it's a little bit laggy, nevertheless, this is what our final model looks like. Now straight away I'm, I'm going to go to the rendered shading mode. So this is what it looks like in Eevee. Make sure you're on Eevee and not Cycles. We, we don't really need to use Cycles to show off a model here, because we're going to use like a dark background for it, and Cycles really isn't necessary unless you have realistic skin textures and things like that going on. So right now this is what our scene looks like with Eevee. First thing that I want to do is I want to create this sculpt on a black background. So go to the world properties and change this color all the way to black. Like so. So we can't see anything that's going on over here. So what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and add in a spot lamp. So go to shift A or go to add light spot. From the front view I'll just move it out to the side and rotate it so that it hits our character like that. So from the top view just rotate it a little bit this side and then place it over here. We still can't see our character because our world is pitch black at the moment. So go to the light properties, change this to something like 1000 watts. And now we can see our character. Cool. Also what I'll do is I'll increase this spot size over here, make it a little bit wider. I think that will look good. All right. We've now set up one side of the character's head sculpt. Next thing I want to do is I want to duplicate this um, same lamp. So hit Shift D and let's move it to this side and rotate it this way. So it hits from the other angle. Actually, move it more towards the side. Shift D is the same thing as duplicating it, so like you can see over here. Right now, it looks like there's too much lighting going on. So we can turn it down. We're aiming to use this one as the secondary light. So you can sort of think of it as a as in like a three-point lighting system, this will be the secondary light. So I'll give this a dark bluish kind of a color and make it really dark, like so, and put the power quite low as well, maybe 100. Oh, that's too low. Let's increase it until we can see a, a little tinge of blue. Oops. Maybe let's make it a little bit lighter blue than that. Yeah, something like that. So we can see a little hint of blue on the side. But I think I might just rotate that light up a little further over here. Yep, that's looking good. Okay, and finally I'll go ahead and add in some backlight. So we are simulating a three-point lighting setup. So this will aim to complement the silhouette of the character. So let's go to add light, not a spotlight but a point light. Okay, let's move it back and let's make the strength of this one even stronger, like really strong, 2500. And if you look at it from the front view, we can see the silhouette now. So if I move it a little bit over here, further up, we can see the silhouette of our character now through that shadow. It's actually a powerful lighting effect uh, when used correctly. Pixar and all these big movies, they tend to use three-point lighting setups to really showcase their characters. Now I just want to give this character a little bit of a glow, glow effect. You don't really have to do this, but uh, I think it'll be a nice finish to our final sculpt. So to do that, we'll go to the world properties and expand volume, change from none to volume scatter, and we'll go to 0 0.001 for the density. So we have a little bit of that glowy effect at the back. All right, so now our sculpt is starting to look really awesome. Also the shadows here, they look very low detailed. Uh, we don't want to kill off all the hard work that went into sculpting all those details with low quality shadows. So we're gonna sharpen up those shadows a bit. Go to the, where is it? Yeah, the render properties and change the viewport sample size to 256. 
same with the render one as well so we should get a lot more smoother shadows right over here in the shadow settings change this to high bit depth as well that should be good the cube size can also be increased to 1024 so we're getting a lot more higher quality detailed shadows now I also turn on contact shadows for each of these spot lamps uh, it's not relatively obvious but it's nice to have that there just in case there's some anomaly the material for the eyes we can go ahead and fix that so let's select the eyeballs go to the materials and make it a little bit more shiny so I'll call this one eyes this is not like realistic eyes this is uh, just for sculpting so we can make the roughness of it quite low maybe almost almost zero the eyes will go ahead and add in another another of these uh, point lamps right in front so shift D and maybe somewhere over here but we don't need it to be as strong so we can just make like 100 and let's just move it in front but out of the way of the eyes the idea is just to get that glint in the eyes We can't really see the reflection of the uh, light, the spotlight over there. So I think for that one, we need to turn on screen space reflections. So we can see some reflections over there. And then for the light, uh, for the eyes, go down where it says blend mode, go to alpha hashed and the alpha hashed. Okay, so we should be able to see a little bit more. But it's looking quite faint. Okay, the material for the actual character, we don't need it to be as smooth looking. So we can uh, actually go and change the roughness to be quite high. But not too high. Something like that. So I think we're showcasing this character quite nice. To keep nudging around with the lighting until you get something that you like. Once you're happy with the lighting setup, we can now go ahead and add our camera. So go Shift A, camera, Alt R just to reset the rotation, R X 90 to position it right in front. Go to zero on your numpad to change to the camera view and then move the camera until you get to the setting that you like. For a more powerful effect, try to put it slightly below the character and rotate it upwards so, so that it's slightly looking up at the character. Let's just put uh, Shift S cursor to selected, Shift A empty. It's a plane axis. We can use the character as well, doesn't matter. But I'll call this empty as the like tracker or something like that. And then go to the camera view again. Select the camera. Change this from beating point to 3D cursor. Now hit RZ and you'll find that you're rotating your character around the 3D cursor. So I'm just going to slightly face this character away from the 3D camera like that. So I'm just going to rotate it on the Z axis. So the character is sort of looking along this distance over here. Gives a much more powerful effect and just move it over here to the rule of thirds just to keep it a little interesting. Okay, let's uh, RZZ just to rotate back a little. And I think I'm now ready to give that a final render. So let's go ahead and hit save and hit F12 to render your uh, final copy. Perfect. That's it. That's the process of sculpting, lighting and rendering a realistic male head sculpture using Blender and its sculpting tools. I hope you enjoyed the series and I look forward to bringing more series just like this one. Thanks for watching.